Let's go on down, AMD is giving us a lot of news and we're going to be covering the wraith fakes and you want to what you want to watch out for for as far as the amd coolers go as there has been counterfeits and amd is looking directly into it with other fun news past that we also directly have a situation for the 5600t something that last week when i was doing my 20.1.3 for those who watch this regularly i recommend it and i am saying don't buy that we're gonna get all into this news on top of patch notes and some benchmarks and you are here on the macgyver 7th channel and my name is mac and let's go ahead and get right to it so first thing i want to cover is the 5600t this is a situation that we need to get under wraps so what I want to cover directly right now is when Gaming Nexus gave out his review and he was an innocent bystander in this. I'm not talking ill of him. I follow his channel. He's a great individual. Steve is an amazing creator. And if you don't follow him, you should. Point being is he recommended it and he got duped by AMD because during Lunar New Year's, which is Chinese New Year's, which just happened around on the 25th year of the rat we're at, um, everyone takes a vacation for about a month and everything is produced directly in through that channel that it goes. So when they had the new BIOS, that was installed after they got back. So all the 5600 XTs that were directly kind of out there and the 5600 series in general, if they have the BIOS Flash 1, it's pretty much you're in the old standards before the improvements that they actually physically made. So it's unfortunate that the overachiever that Steve got ended up being the underachiever that everyone else started to get out throughout the world. So I would say definitely take a pause. Don't buy one of those cards directly yet. You know, I'm sure AMD will make good on it because otherwise you're gonna have to flash your graphics card and that's extraordinarily hard. You roll the chance of bricking that, you may run into like virtual RAM memory errors and you won't even know what's going down. It's, it's just not a good look, not a good standpoint for someone that's like not really into like, I don't even wanna overclock my card. I just wanna plug and play and play some really great games. So, I mean, that's what I'm saying. Don't get it, get maybe a 5700 XT, they're pretty decent right now. And we also have the 5950 on the list as it comes out so we're finally getting into that but on top of that news amd is the great marketer when it comes down to the wraith coolers when you have situations for as far as cooling stuff so as you can see what i have pulled up right here there's a counterfeit one and now you can basically see that it's not directly flat on the bottom but it has six pipes so amd is looking into this to see exactly the validity do not use these they could very well harm your processor if they start leaking out and your motherboard and or ram depending on how bad this situation go now it also could be an extraordinarily good performer and it's just an aftermarket but for right now until things in the dust settles i'm not giving it my recommendation one other thing that I wanted to bring up since we were on the topic of the next generation of the RDNA 2, which has been confirmed from Red Gaming Tech and his channel and his sources, as you can basically follow him and understand the same news that I'm getting filtered directly as it gets real time besides all the other outlets that I check, you can see that they have been spotted on the market and it's a very good situation because it would be an adaptable point because they pushed the RDNA already pretty far with the Navi series as we've come up from this situation going to the... Now, the 21 and 23 are speculated as the NVIDIA killers, but with the turning or Ampere, whatever the heck you want to call it, it is going to push about 50% more past the 2080 Ti. So even if AMD scoots up 20% closer past the 2080 Ti, which is speculation right now for probably the 21 and 23 being able, especially with a headroom of overclocking, maybe you might get something that's like maybe a little decent, but it's gonna be in between that because that means it's gonna be a great car, it's gonna have ray tracing, it's gonna have a new generation of RDNA and the software work that they can have in the implication, but Nvidia, will always have that one step leap ahead. And especially when now the challenge, I'm really excited to see where the market goes with both these companies. So it's a good problem, everyone. Now let's go ahead and get back to the news and what we have for as far as today's situation. The patch notes have been pulled up directly. And if you can see Warcraft 3 on top of the RX 57 XT, it gets 11% more improvement in the performance. Now they have tested this with against the 20, 
20.1.3 and the comparison of the new optional of the 20.1.4. Now these are exclusive situations as well as they have Journey to the Savage Planet as ad support for the situation. But it seems like that these Warcraft games and the, with the Radeon software are only performing better for exclusive titles. So if you're looking for that title jump, then this is exactly going to be you for as far as what's gonna go happen. Now, if you've had square blocks here and there, textures pop up inside of the game of Red Dead Redemption 2, this should hopefully be your fixing patch for optional. On top of the, some of the API being fixed directly inside of the Vulcan applications where they're experiencing hangups with the Radeon imaging, on top of the text flow and the observation of the toast messages. Now, that one's always making a list like they're fixing it, so maybe they're doing in various cards. Um, looking on top of the Radeon Relive where it fails to switch for the recording into the desktop when the software is open, and Grand Theft Auto 5, now making the list more often than never, is the system hangups inside of the black screen and launch when the new Radeon overlay while in game. So if once you're toggling the software, this is when you're gonna start experiencing these situations. The audio may have intermittence and they basically missing, and again, Radeon Relive, use OBS. Now the inner scaling as far as the Windows 7, and these are old things. They said that they fixed probably the bottomless. That's all pretty much as far as these two. These two are brand new. The, the old Vulcan and the Red Dead Redemption. The other like three to four underneath those are all common issues that they said they fixed last week so looking at the known issues as we can see directly down here when you see that we have the experience being limited in the displays for as far as performance mode in the rx 5000 series so you're not going to get a lot of performing portions on side of that for your your screens on top of that on top the Final Fantasy series in the shadow brings benchmarks, the system cr crashes. The integral scaling on the video content shows flickering and dissolve less than native. Um, and they fix around that, usually it's going back to native. As well as on top of that situation, the multiple games may have very dark or very bright games in HDR when enabled in the Windows. On top of the situation for the anti-lag and the disabling beep notification, which has made the list and the Radeon overlay and the hotkeys sometimes being displayed during the video playback and the web launching in some video applications which I've experienced. The Radeon software may open in inconsistent sizes on top of the situation in previous sizes. All these things we pretty much have seen for the most part. As I can kind of see in the situation, kind of tug this list over a little bit. On top of that situation, as we can kind of see, that the 5700 card makes the bottom of the list as we have the intermediate black screens as they go down the situation of the hardware acceleration in Discord. Footnotes, this is exactly where you can see that where they tested it and how they tested it for as far as the gaming down below of the rig. It is funny though that I always notice that they do use an Intel 99K. Very interesting. But moving on past that, I have the links down below past the footnotes where you can download this optional today. Now what we're going to get into for as far as patch notes beyond looking at some benchmarks and seeing the standard versus the optional of last week and the optional of this week, we have some very fun situations that we can get into. So let's go ahead and jump into some numbers, shall we? So with Fire Strike and the DirectX 11, we see some fun situations. One thing I want to point out is the compared portions where it's better than 93% where we're going against the scale of the other GPUs in the world against the 3D benchmarks. You can see that the score above reflects a very low versus what the original, this is where we're going to go right back to it. This is the optional of last week, so you have the 20.1.3 versus what we just looked at prior to this, which was the 1912.2. You can see that there are some variable points. A, we drop 2% on the comparable market as its strength and situation, but we do gain a higher score in situations sometimes when we go down to the clarities, the adding on of the hardware. So you can see that there is going to be a, a toll take for as far as the way you can presumably have all these situations on because i did run a lot of these situations with everything that it was applied with what was there so you know, image sharpening um you know your boosts everything that it kind of came with the 2020 adrenaline software 
so you can definitely see where the standard has its strength inside of a fire strike test now take that lightheartedly because fire strikes can vary but let's go ahead and look at today's optional one you can download currently which is the 20.1.4 as you can see, it still ranks directly in the situation between now the comparison of the 20.1.3 versus the 21.4. You can see the situations kind of vary by one point, but it's a stability that you can count on. If you can see the situation of what I'm trying to paint here, yes, there might be some acceleration with the old standard, but there is going to be stability with patches and fixes that are unique, like Red Dead Redemption and all these other things where optionals do come into gameplay a little better for the person. So let's go ahead and look at the extreme and the ultra strikes and compare them where it's utilizing overclocks and 4K. So you can see a little bit more of the strengths past something that already can very easily compute 1080p. Now, comparatively, yet again, the standard kills it right now for as far as the stability goes in the situation. Now, now what I did do is a clean install for everything. I wiped my profiles when I did the standard and I did not even touch at all the uh, the Wattman because the minute you touch the Wattman, it makes you submit, oh, hey, I approve that I know that I'm messing with this and if I mess with it too much, I can break it. Yeah, yada, yada, yada. You break your warranty type situation for the most part. You're not really, but it's just, they just warn you, you can kind of mess stuff up. Um, so I reset everything and just tested it just as its native portion. So I didn't tap into that. It's just running by itself between standard, last week's optional, and this week's optional, as we can kind of see. So you can see where the standard versus last week's optional versus this week's optional all yield an insanely different results. It's really cool. So this is this week's. As you can see, it increases a little from last week where they got a little bit of a bump. It's like literally roughly about 16 points. But when you compare that versus the standard, well, there's a huge increasement for as far as scoring go. Look at that. It goes literally up by almost like a clean, almost by 100. So again, the standard is killing it when it comes to performance, but it may not kill it when it comes down to your favorite games or added key functions that we've all come to like. Now coming up with Fire Strike Ultra, pretty much the same synopsis has hit us inside the rhythm. As you can see standard, as we can jump into last week's optional, and then we go into this week. So you can see a trend down with these newer portions, but if they are fixing stuff, in their rdna structure or their just radeon structure depending on what card graphics you are rocking you know it's it's a step forward but amd really does need to increase if they're decreasing it to increase it for certain games like 11 percent, but then all of a sudden the standard of the DirectX 11 is hurting you know you need to make the vast majority of the games better versus just one or two of them and right now, as it is, the industry is kind of pissed at AMD a little bit as they kind of screwed over the partners with that 5600 article that I was getting into in the very beginning of this uh, segment is that, you know, no one was prepared for that. And now, so what are they supposed to do? Now they've sold a card to someone that's been advertised from AMD to perform better, but now it's underperforming and the reviewers got the overperformers. So it's like, well, well, you know, you guys need to do some really cool stuff really fast. What happened to the ray tracing software that you were going to implement inside of there? Yes, we have the uh, Technor, which I've done before in the situation, which was really great. But it it was able to showcase that, yes, my Radeon 7 card can kick ass and like, you know, ray tracing, but it's only a software implementation. And when you do actually have the actual ray tracing cores for those stream cores and the CUDA cores for what NVIDIA directly goes inside of, the RTX cores will offer a, well, a, a better look at the way you can get with that technology versus software is always gonna have its limitations when it first kind of gets implemented. So a lot of fun stuff to kind of look at. Now, this is the interesting thing. We already know DirectX 11 is pretty much killing it, which a majority of all the software is pretty much written on. DirectX 12 is kind of hard for a majority of it because they kind of rely on the software developers to kind of like mill it over versus DirectX 11 is just like this very refined, very well accepted, you know, software that's been able to go. So it's like, it's very interesting to see that the trend down is on that. But when you look at the DirectX 12, it's a complete different story. Check this out. So standard 1912.3, not 1912.2. You have the 20.1.3, 
which drops, you can see the very good consistencies where the graphics score is taking a hit. It's not the CPU, it's only varied by maybe a few points. So as you can look at that situation, yeah, the graphics card is being milled over by software, but the beautiful thing is this software, if you have a DirectX 12 implication, which probably more than likely might be a little bit more Red Dead and other games that they tuned up in this situation, bam, look, we beat the standard by three points. So it's kind of interesting. Now let's go ahead and look at the extreme test. And this is where you can see it confirms exactly what I was looking into. So standard, killing it, right? Versus last week's optional, not so hot. You know, with looking at the comparisons, now I am running this on my Threadripper and I found a way to get it a little more steady, but you are dealing with 32 cores and the variations that it can have inside of that injunction temperatures, but it is pretty concise when I'm looking at the scores directly. And you can kind of see that there are a little bit variables, but again, 32 cores, that's where you're gonna get a few hundred points shifted over here and there, versus where the graphics score, well, yeah, there's a huge kind of portion. Now, check this out though. Look at today's standard. That's insane. When you compare that, that's at least a 17. That's an insane, almost about, like, clean 71 points there's your 11 percent your 11 percent is funneling directly through direct x12 and they're tapping in more towards 4k since their nvidia killer and all that stuff is going to disrupt the market for 4k it's easy to see that their software team is probably more than likely aiming towards that within the ryzen technology taking off already and now the gpu market trying to you know conquer stuff amd is a great company and i do like to see where they go inside of there but i don't like when they do stuff like for as far as the 5600 series and the cars and the people uh, are trying to recommend a great car and then get a really bad one for most people that are only you know looking at reviewers and trying to look at tech reviews and all that stuff every so often you know that could be the difference between oh man i got sold lemon versus man i wish i would have got the right information so you always kind of kind of take the industry a grain by salt and what i've learned is always wait about a month or so to kind of buy stuff but for as far as creator and trying to test something out you kind of want to get a day one so i'm gonna go ahead and leave it at that that's your patch that's your news and it's your boy max signing off thank you so much for staying tuned with the channel and i'll see you guys and gals next week or a little beyond as the new adrenaline software rolls out if you're new to the network you can always like share and subscribe helps me absolutely free as a creator slam that liberty bell so you get all the notifications for all your tech wanted needs and drop a comment down below i would like to hear what you think about the show as well as the technology and the way it's turning do you have a 5600 xt and where you sold something and you were like oh my god or the situation where you ordering a wraith cooler and now you can cancel it on your amazon because it's a fake let me know your boy mike sending out and saying have a nice day and i'll see you guys and gals in the future